hello everyone so in today's tutorial i'm going to be showing you how to draft the pattern for eye waist cigarette pants such as the one that you are looking at right now so let's get into it if you're using a stretchy fabric you need one and a half yards if it's non-stretchy you need two yards for the particular trouser measurements that i'm using right now the measurements you need waist hips tie for the crotch measurements you don't necessarily have to take it but i would advise that you should but a, there's a formula that i use in case you forgot to take it and then you can take your knee measurement and your ankle measurement now the first thing i'm going to do on my pattern paper i'm using a hip of 40 inches i'm going to divide that into four and that's 10 inches and i'm going to measure 10 inches from the top of my pattern paper all the way down to the bottom then after doing that i'm going to join all my dots with a straight line so it's like a hip block so it's like an hip block that i'm going to use and then after doing that I'm going to measure from my waist to my hip now remembering that this is a high waist trouser so that means the, the length from my waist to my hip is about nine inches okay and then we're going to talk about the crotch length now there is a formula that I use which is hips divided by four so if the hips is 40 inches I divide it by 4 and I have 10 inches and I mark 10 inches but remembering that this is an eye waist trouser so that means it's going to be higher than the normal point that I put my trousers so I'm going to add extra 2 inches to that because it's an eye waist trouser so we have to account for that with our crotch length so that made a total of 12 inches for my crotch and of course 9 inches for my waist to hip measurement and then i'm going to join the two lines together and label that one crotch and i'm going to label this one hip line all right so after doing that the next thing i'm going to do is mark my tie line now you can put your tie directly on your crotch if you want but if you don't want that you can just go down by 1 to 1.5 inches below your crotch line and then mark that as your tie uh, line now after putting down all these reference lines the next thing that you need to do is to measure your waist measurement divided by four the waist that i'm using is 27 inches if i divide that into four i'm going to have 6.75 so i'm going to measure 6.75 on my waistline now the way i'm going to do that is that i'm going to leave a 0.5 inches space on one side of the uh, paper and then measure 6.75 from that point the reason why i'm doing this is because we're trying to eradicate that you know me now i always like to remove that from my clothes so that that's not mess up things so this is a great way to eliminate that from your trouser so i just left this 0.5 inches space at one end and i measure 6.75 and then i mark that on my waist point camera flip <laughs> after that i'm going to then measure on my tie line the um the width of my tie so i'm going to take the width of my tie it was 22 divided by 2 that was 11 inches and i'm going to extend my tie line to that point so you just need your tie line for one tie of course and then just divide that into two and that will be your tie measurement and i'm also going to extend my crotch line and then square that up we are still going to slant it a little bit but we haven't gotten there yet next up is drawing my crotch curve and then from that junction i went up by one inch and then i'm just drawing a curve to join it from my hip line to my crotch line and then i'm drawing a straight line from my hip line all the way to my waistline just like you see me do and then on the other side i'm going to join the curve from my hip to my waist for the other side and then after doing all of that the next thing is to find the midpoint of my uh, block and then i drew a straight line down from that midpoint downwards now the reason why i'm doing this is so that i can split all my measurements into two equal parts on either side of my block then i measure from my waist to my knee just forget about that first line that first line was a big flop the, my, the measurement from my waist to knee is 23 and not 22 i measured 22 before then the next thing i'm going to measure from my waist to the floor you know i want that trouser to be scrunched up at the bottom so i made it a little longer than the normal length that i'll use i used about 45 inches for the length of the pants now my knee measurement is 16 inches 16 divided by 2 is 8 so i'm going to split it eight into two on either sides of the line and that will be four four the same thing for my ankle is 12 divided into two is six and so i split it 
three three inches on either side of my line and then i'm going to square it up because that part is my um seam allowance or sewing allowance for the bottom it's still going to be a little bit longer when i draw it on my fabric but for now i'm putting a one inch seam allowance to roll up my m at the bottom and now i'm joining all the lines at the bottom you see how it's looking good and then i'm going to then use the curved part to join from my tie to my knee just like that smooth sweet and curvy <laughs> all right so at that point you see i told you i was going to slant that up a little bit just to give it that nice slant right there so so it's just a tiny slant of like about 0.5 inches extension or something like that just to make it look you know good and it's not all squared up and funny looking so then i'm measuring from my knee all the way to my tie on the other side i use the straight cord I've seen people use uh, uh, the curvy part, but I prefer the straight side of my ruler to make that point. The next thing then is to account for your stomach bulge. You know, everybody has a stomach. So we have to find a way to create like a nice space for our stomach when we put on our pants. And that's why we go down by zero, 0 0.5 to 1 inch on the, the slant and then curve it all the way up the way you see me do. I hope my explanation was okay but i hope you get what i mean you understand what i mean you understand what i'm saying all right so after that i'm going to then cut out my band remember i cut this as if i was cutting an eye waistband without band so i want to remove my bands i just measured two inches round about that and then i created my band so i'm going to still attach this band to the main trouser all right so I'm going to add 0 0.5 inches all around the band because I'm cutting out, cutting it out on a pattern paper. But when I want to cut it out on my fabric, I add 0 0.5 inches. And on the remaining part of the trouser, I'm also going to add 0 0.5 inches to the top. And then on the side, I'm going to add 0 0.75 to 1 inches seam allowance. If it's a stretchy fabric, you don't even need to add any seam allowance at all but if it's not a stretchy fabric add 0 0.5 to 1 inch seam allowance on every side now for your crotch length your crotch length must be at least 2.5 inches longer than your hip measurement i measured mine and it was three which is perfect so you have to measure yours to make sure that there is nothing off with it now we are moving on to back the back pattern for some reason some of my tin Ah, this thing pain me i'm not gonna lie it's like a lot of it was cut off and so i have to use my mouth to explain it and you guys have to bear with me and you know let's just a whole new world i don't know what to say but let's just imagine the world where that part was not chopped off okay so at the top of my uh pattern i just added 1.5 inches to the top of it and at the crotch side i'm going to add 3.5 inches it's like i'm elongating the crotch for the back pattern so please please i beg you bear with me i'm so sorry that it was cut off i don't know what happened but it happened so you're going to add 3.5 inches to the crotch of and then on the, every other side you're going to add two inches all the way around it so two inches on the crotch line but on the uh, sorry on the crotch curve but on the crotch itself you add 3.5 inches and then also from the knee downward you're also going to add two inches all the way down this is for the making of the back pattern remember we just made the front pattern so now the difference between the front and the back is that the back pattern has an elongated crotch of three inches there's an an increased height of 1.5 inches and a two inches seam allowance on every other side of the, the back pattern so i hope that you at least you have an idea of what i'm saying and you please bear with me and open up your your mind and let us see the invisible crotch extension and every other thing that was, was in this pattern that i'm not seeing that you're not seeing right now but i hope you get the idea of what i'm saying so the back pattern is not just longer but a little bit wider than the front pattern now i can cut off the stomach slant on the front pattern since i've finished tracing out the back pattern with it and then i'm then going to trace it out on the side as well because the side is exactly the same 
for both the front and the back the only time you add seam allowance is when you are cutting it on your fabric but you don't need to add seam allowance on your pattern paper but remember that you add seam allowance to the crotch side of the back pattern but on this side there is no seam allowance for both the front and back pattern except when you are putting it on your fabric and adding all the extra inches so now i'm going to cut out the band for the back as well i'm measuring two inches just like i did for the front and then i'm going to join my dots together and cut out the band for the back pattern after cutting out the band i made sure i labeled it side and front side and front for both bands to make sure that when i join them together i'll join the sides together correctly Oh no, on the band so i advise you to also do the same now it's time to cut out my pattern on my fabric i'm using this semi stretchy fabric like it is stretchy but it's not like stretchy stretchy so i'm going to add about just 0.5 inches seam allowance on all the sides of the fabric but even even though i did that i probably wish i didn't because it was still pretty stretchy enough for for it not to need allowance on the side so that's why i advise you as long as it's stretchy just don't bother to even put any allowance whatsoever around it after you know cutting in the, your pattern out all right so i just finished cutting out my front pattern and i'm also going to cut out my back pattern as well so the next thing is to cut out my pockets i already have the pattern of the pockets and i'm going to leave it here for a few minutes so you can see all the measurements on the side right before i use it to cut now i'm going to use the bigger side of it to trim to trace out trace it out on my fabric as you see me do and then after tracing out the bigger side i'm going to just remove two pieces and then use the smaller one to also trace out the the um rest of the pocket okay so i need one piece to be full and the other piece to be the part where this the your hand enters inside the pocket if you get what i mean so i am trying to make a nice pocket design you know innovative yearly always trying to innovate something <laughs> and actually the pocket actually came out really good very very good you know nice just like i expected it so i just drew this color p this color p color p design to my pockets you see the way it's coloring don't worry it came out really good so i'm going to then trim out the rest of the um pockets just like you see me do and then my pocket is ready with the base of the pocket and then here we have it so now you can see you don't have to make the stereotype pocket you can make it a night you can give it a nice design however it is however your creativity is leading you you can do whatever it is you want with your design so after doing that i'm going to split open my kidney it was joined together at the hip <laughs> for some reason so i'm going to then place my pocket pattern on the side of my pants of my front pants and i'm going to cut out that pattern on the side of my front pants so it's so it's be easy for me to join both of them together like you have to do this make you have to do this process to be able to join your pockets together so after doing that i have my um, band left to be joined together so you see this that's the reason why i labeled it so i can join my side to side and the front is on the other side mm, sorry front to front and then the sides and or, or are on the other side and so when i want to place them on my pattern paper for example i'm going to make sure that one side is open and the other side is closed one of the sides are open and the other side is closed so that it's going to be a long band a long complete band and i notch the middle to make sure i know where the middle is when i want to put it on my pants so you see it's a nice long band all joined together so i have my band i have my pockets i have my front and back pattern pieces now if you want to see how to join um, pants together i have a lot of videos on joining of the pants i'm putting on pockets i'm going to add it in the description below and even put it as a card on top of this video so i don't have to show you how to join it together it's already available on my um, channel and i'm going to put it in the description and as a card thank you so very much for being with me this far have a great day bye